Hi, I'm agronomist Greg Phillips and welcome to my YouTube channel. I am a former golf course superintendent, over 30 years of experience. I have an agronomy degree from North Carolina State University and over 40 videos on home lawn care on my YouTube channel. Welcome to all of you. Um, today we are talking about post-emergent herbicides, meaning herbicides that after the weed has germinated, uh, this is the herbicide you put on to control it. We, uh, I have a pre-emergent herbicide video if you want to check it out. But today we're talking about post-emergent herbicides. Some folks call it weed and feed in the summer. Um, I am going to go over herbicides. I've really <laughs> researched these. My goals have been this. I wanted to find a very broad spectrum products, okay? Meaning they should cover just about any weed you can have. That will take the, your, your need for weed identification, which I do encourage you to do that, learn your weeds, but I have found, I found herbicides that do a very broad spectrum so you don't have to worry so much about weed identification. Um, secondly, as you can see, these products can be put out with a backpack sprayer, a spreader, or even these hose applicators if you don't have really familiarity with, <laughs> with a backpack sprayer or a spreader. Uh, with the spreader, I have a chart that will help you get your proper spreader setting. So I got that taken care of. Um, these herbicides, again on price, if I've not mentioned that, I have also considered where they can be purchased. I have a video on a uh, a, a February through May lawn program for just about every grass you could possibly have. There was one product in there that I have that I will go over that can't be sold in California. I've actually found another product that you can use as a post-emergent herbicide that can be sold in California. I've even considered that. So we got price, availability, and efficacy. So all of those together. Um, so anyway, um, now a few do's and don'ts. Um, one, don't mow when, before you apply. Do not mow two days before and do not mow two days after. It is paramount that the herbicide, one, that you have as much leaf surface as you can from that weed, okay? If you go through there and if you cut the weeds off, all right, or pardon me, you cut the leaves off, you're not going to have that surface to absorb the herbicide. Most of these herbicides are absorbed by both the, the leaf and the roots, but you want it getting in the leaf, getting in the leaves and getting in the roots as well for your efficacy. So you're not having to do another application. Cost you time, cost you money, not good for the environment. Okay. So don't mow two days before, not mow two days after. So that herbicide sits there and gets absorbed by that leaf. Okay. Then you can mow. Okay. Now, as far as at timing, okay, weeds need to be actively growing. So the, the ambient air temperature should be between 50 and 85 degrees. Now let's talk about the 85 first. A lot of these grassy weeds, and we're talking, when we're talking 85, we're talking summer. A lot of the grassy weeds need to be, weed control products need to be between 75 and 85 degrees in order to work properly. And sometimes they'll need non-ionic surfactant. When you're putting out with a backpack sprayer, I will go over that. Anyway, it needs to be that warm. You don't want to go above 85 because that's too much stress for the plant, even warm season grasses. So when it's above 85, hold off, wait for a few days where it's cooled down. Now, as far as 50, obviously you guys are going out in the spring. Here we are in February. When should we go out? Now, there's a plant, actually a bush, called Forsythia. It blooms, it, I think it grows nationwide, I actually checked to make sure. Uh, it is a brilliant yellow. And you can see these, if you really start looking around, after the Pasithia have bloomed, you can go start going out with your, herb, your, your, your post-emergent herbicides. Or you can go out after two good mowings. You've actually mowed your grass and you've actually got some good clippings. Uh, then you can go ahead and put out your herbicides. Okay, as far as warm season grass, guys, when you're coming out of dormancy, please wait until it's completely out of dormancy. You're not going to kill your grass, but you're going to delay the dormancy of it because a lot of these products will kind of yellow your grass a little, okay? It'll set it back a little. And when it's coming out of dormancy, it's kind of a gentle time. If you put a herbicide out on it, set it back a little bit, your spring dormancy is going to be delayed. And if it's actively growing, and the weeds are going to be actively growing too, wait for after dormancy, um, then put out your herbicide. You'll have better results and your yard will look better. Um, time of day. If you do it with a granular, with a fertilizer spreader, 
you should do it ideally in the morning or after a light rain or after a light irrigation. Why do we want to do that? I recommend in, I recommend in the morning because you can see your tracks in the dew. Okay, I actually used to do that when I was sprayed for fairways on golf courses. As I would go out before dawn and first light, I'd be out spraying fairways because I can see exactly where I went because I can see what, what where the dew was disturbed. You also see that with your broadcast spreader too. You actually see where it landed, so it makes you can identify where you've been much better. Why you need it wet, slightly wet, is so that herbicide in that granular will stick to the leaf blade and there absorbs will be absorbed by it. If it's dry, it'll just fall to the ground. There again, we want it sticking to the leaf blade. Now, on a liquid, either with the hose or with the backpack, I generally go out maybe a couple hours before sundown. Reason being is, if it evaporates off, generally you know have herbicide there. It can arguably, arguably affect the efficacy because some of it's going to ev evaporate off. Um, if you put it on just before the just before the sun goes down, enough daylight where you can see what you're doing and, and you can do a good job of it and you're not rushed. Um, that'll sit there on the leaf blade overnight. It'll really be absorbed by that plant and it's a, it's a good time to put out your liquid. So do those in the afternoon, evening. Now, never use a drop spreader. If you're putting out the spreader, only use a broadcast spreader. I don't recommend a drop spreader for anything. Um, it just, you can't get it uniform. I've, I've been doing this 30 years. I could not get it uniform. It's just not going to happen. Now, there, I, I talked real quick about a non-ionic surfactant, and generally it's a table, it's a tablespoon, oh, pardon me, yeah, it's a tablespoon per gallon is what you would need on a non-ionic surfactant. I'll go over some chemicals with that when you put it out the backpack sprayer. What those do is, is they allow the, the herbicide to stick better to the plant. Um, those are more critical for um, summer weed control than it is in the spring, but for broadleaf weeds, but it's, it's good to follow the label. The Sublime product that I have does require non ironic surfactant, but you only need a tablespoon of it per gallon. Uh, no rainfall 24 hours after you have put down your herbicide. Um, a lot of, some herbicides say they're ready, rain ready in an hour, and I found that to be true. Um, I you know, put up glyphosate and a few other products that say they're rain ready, and generally they are, but ideally you don't want any rain. If you can, you know, wait a day or two. It's really important to get these down in a very effective way. Prevent you from putting it out again. Double your money, double your time. So anyway, try no irrigation or rain 24 hours after you put it out. Um, I would say backpack sprayers, those of you who are not familiar with backpack sprayers, I encourage you to become familiar with them. I will have a backpack sprayer calibration video on at linked at the end of this video. Um, you know, it's not that hard. Um, and you can get it uniform. Do some trial runs. Just put water in it. And I would, uh, this one's mine. It's a, it's a Petra. It's a, um, it, this one's a, I've used it for commercial grade. I've had this thing for years. Um, it's actually a battery powered. They're like a couple hundred bucks. This one's a little bit pricier, but get you a good name brand backpack spray if you're going to do it. Because if you get some of these Walmart cheapo varieties, you're going to have them for pop, you're pop, probably by the third time you spray with them, they're going to break. Okay, they just are. So get you a good quality uh, spray, uh, sprayer. Um, you can see my, I actually go over that in my calibration video of what is a good sprayer, so you can hop over and see that. Um, so uh, watch your landscaping when you're putting out these herbicides because a lot of these are for broadleaf weeds. Most of your landscaping is a broadleaf weed, or pardon me, a broadleaf plant. And you can, it'll be hard to kill a lot of them, but you can set them back. If, particularly if you have small ornamentals, um, you can whack them. Uh, so just be aware. And that's one advantage of putting out with a backpack spray or even the hose, okay, is you can target things pretty good. All right. Now, always start in your backyard. <laughs> <laughs> Had one time, but now uh, I think it was a fungicide with my backpack sprayer. I thoroughly cleaned it except for the hose and the thing I, I put up Roundup prior to there was enough Roundup in there I killed probably about eh, probably about 20 square foot of my yard and it happened to be in the front yard that was nice and it had um, pre-merged in it too so I actually had to resod that area so start in your backyard in case something weird happens um, if it is your first time putting it out I would encourage you either in your backpack sprayer or your spreader only put maybe a pound or a half a pound in your backpack sprayer, or pardon me, in your spreader. Put it out and then measure, make sure you're, you're, you're putting out at the correct rate. Backpack sprayer, same thing. 
Um, but if you do a couple particular backpacks for a couple trial runs with water, um, you're going to be familiar enough. You're going to be comfortable enough. You're going to be able to do it. So now I'm going to break out for everybody. I encourage everybody to listen to all these. Um, I, I'm trying to be cognizant of your time, but I'm going to kind of separate things. First, I'm going to go over the backpack sprayer recommendations for those, those products. Then I'm going to do the spreader and then I'm going to do the hose adapter. Okay. But if you want to listen to all of them, please do, or you can fast forward, re rewind or what have you. So anyway, we're going to backpack sprayers. Now, I've got two products that I recommend. Um, one of them is called Sublime. And I actually have this in my, um, in my uh, program video. Um, and it's about $65 for a 32-ounce uh, jug um, of it. It's only a three, read the, always read the label, but generally what I've saw on the label is it's, it's 0.75 ounces per thousand square feet. So that is going to do you an acre. Okay, so that's going to do your multiple times. So uh, for $65, you can easily cover any pre post emergent uh, you, that you need on a typical 8,000 square foot yard, which is what I have. Um, the great thing about Sublime is you can seed immediately after you've applied it, which I really like. That's one of the considerations I have with finding all these herbicides is can you seed immediately after? So you have that flexibility in the spring if you need to. Um, also, remember on Sublime, particularly for you guys up north, this will control Poanya. So if you have a lot of Poanya in your yard, be aware of that. Um, it can control it. So, But you can turn around and you can seed a good variety of tall fescue, ryegrass, bluegrass, see my grassing video, uh, my overseeding video. I make some recommendations there. But you can seed right behind it and get you a better yard. Okay? Um, now, uh, the interval to spray it, you can spray it. After 28 days, you can spray it again, but it's a, it's a good product. It's got, um, it's got actually three herbicides in it. It's got a triclopyr, a dicamba, and a mistrone. <laughs> okay. Um, those are group four with the triclopyr and dicamba, and the mesostrone is a 27, is a group 27 herbicide. Now, why do I bring that up? I mentioned this over in my uh, pre-emergent herbicide. You can actually get weed resistance. The, gr the group that the herbicide is in is the mode of action for that herbicide. Okay, so the triclopyr, for example, is a group four. The mesotrone is a 27. Okay, so you have two different groups there. So now there are some things the triclopyr covers that the mesotrone doesn't, but it's important to have diversity and you have multiple groups of herbicides out going out into your into your yard so you don't get weed resistance. And as I said in my pre-emergent video, the majority of pre-emergent herbicides are group three. So if you're using this post-emergent herbicide, you have three different groups of herbicides going out that will cover your weeds and your lack, your, your ability, your possibility of weed resistance is significantly reduced. So anyway, uh, there again, Sublime can't be used in California, Arizona, or Vermont, or Washington. But <laughs> I found a product called Q4. Um, oh, by the way, all of these will be linked down at the bottom. So uh, you can go straight to them, uh, go to Amazon, Walmart, go straight to them, have them delivered, you're good to go. Anyway, another thing about Sublime, you can't use it on Bermuda. It's surprising. Bermuda, which is actually a good, a good thing for a lot of you. Centipede, St. Augustine, um, other, you know, blue, blue rye. If you have Bermuda grass in your yard, this will actually suppress your Bermuda. So that's another good thing about um, Sublime. Now, for you Bermuda grass guys, you will have to use the next product, Q4. Uh, the Q4 is $60 for a 32 ounce container. Now, you might think, well, Sublime's 65, Q4 is 60. It's cheaper. Okay, here's where we're talking about price. And this is one thing I looked at. Okay, it's 2.6 ounces per thousand square feet on most of the recommendations for the grass. Please look at the label for your specific grass. But you need over twice as much of Q4 versus the Sublime. Okay, so that's something to keep in mind. But if you're in California, Arizona, Vermont, or Washington, you're kind of stuck with the Q4. It is what it is. But it's got quinacloroc. So Purizone, 2,4-D, and Dicamba in it, okay? That's a group four on the quinacloroc. 
Um, Surf Zone is 14, or Surf Euro Zone, there we go, is 14. 24D is a group four, and DICAMB is group four. So you have group fours and 14s there. So anyway, seeding behind this one. You gotta wait for majority of cool season grasses seven days before you can seed after you put out Q4, which is not that hateful. If you have Kentucky bluegrass, you need to wait 14 days to put out the, um, Q4. So anyway, um, and uh, Q4, for those of you up north, that uh, this does not control Poanya. Okay? So if you have been happy with your yard with Poanya in it, go ahead and use the Q4 rather than the Sublime um, because you won't get, it won't whack your Poanya. But you may, I hate Poanya. I, former golf course superintendent gets on golf greens, puts out a seed head in the spring. It is a pain in the keister. It looks like the devil, hard control. Um, so anyway, those are the backpack spray recommendations that I have. Um, there again, links to all these products will be in the comments, so you know you got your right one. Now for broadcast spreaders, we have an Anderson 1609 with Surge. Okay, that is a fertilizer, and now we're getting into the weed and feeds. Um, it's eighty nine bucks a bag ballpark at. Uh, um, Amazon. Amazon's got it for that much. It treats anywhere from 10 to 20,000 square feet per bag, um, depending on the type of turf you have. Cool season grasses is going to be closer to that 20,000. Warm season grass is going to be closer to that 10. The reason why I like it is you can use it on just about any grass, including St. Augustine and Centipede. It is labeled for both, um, except for Florham, uh, St. Augustine. So just be careful if you have that variety. I am not, I'm most, eh, mildly familiar with St. Augustine. I'm in West Virginia. It's mostly in the coastal and Florida areas. But I'm trying to take care of you guys too because St. Augustine and Centipede, you have to watch with broadleaf herbicides on those two because you can damage the grass. I had one fairly popular product line where somebody, you know, and that's the one thing, I'm one of the goals of this, I'm trying to help you guys so you're not getting a product because it says same for all grass and then you look at the back and they go well except for saint augustine and centipede or except for this or except for that and i don't know why they put that on there it's disappointing that they do that so anyway i'm trying to take this out of it so anyway the anderson product um 24d mika prop dicamba and sulfurazone so you've got group fours and group 14s in there um you'll it you also get about a quarter of of the product is a slow release fertilizer okay so it's a 1609 so you're putting out a ballpark of about a uh, about a pound of nitrogen per thousand square feet and a quarter of that is going to feed your yard for about six to eight weeks um, with sulfur code urea um, you can get a little bit yelling with bermuda at this that's why i recommend putting it out when it is actively growing but with the fertilizer on it that should take care of a lot of the, any type of yellowing that you have, okay? Uh, you can seed three weeks after application. You have to wait three weeks when you put this out. Um, the only restrictions I've seen in Suffolk and Norfolk counties of, of New York. So those of you who live there, you'll have to go another route. Got an option for you here, though. Um, now, the SGN. SGN is the particle size of the product on fertilizers. This is one of the things that disappoints me about some some fertilizer labels. Scott's is bad about it. I have not seen an SGN on it, meaning that's the size of the particle. This Anderson product, the Anderson products, I use them when I was a golf course superintendent. I'm very happy with them. They are very high quality, good stuff. And I like their labels. I wish Scott's had a little more information on their labels, but they're trying to, they, they do a good job. Don't get me wrong. I just kind of wish they had a few other things on there. But I'm not seeing a whole lot of SGN. So anyway, Long story short, this Anderson product is a 150 SGN. I'm going to show you a chart to where you can find the model of your spreader. And if you look at the back of the bag, they have Scott's RA, a few other ones, Earthway, I think, and they actually have an Anderson. And you, pardon me, and you can look for the model of spreader that you have. And that will give you a starting point of where to set it on, where you can put it out. So I'll go over that right now. Okay, here is what will be on the fertilizer bag that you get in. I'm going to do this very quickly. Over here are the active ingredients. That's the herbicide. So you'll see the name. You'll see the analysis. Then you'll see 
the herbicides that are in the bag. And then let's see, you will also see, um, okay, here's the guaranteed analysis. This is where you will find, you'll see here, um, for the slowly available nitrogen, that is, okay, of the 16%, four of that is slowly available, meaning 12% is essentially water-soluble fertilizer. It's a quick-release fertilizer. So anyway, very quickly, how to read the back of a fertilizer bag. That's just the real thing. There so again, if it's a herbicide, there's the active ingredients like we've talked about. There's the analysis, and there's how much slow-release nitrogen in it. And it'll tell you this one happens to be, as I said, sulfur-coated urea. Now, over here, this is the nitty-gritty. And, of course, you'll see all the, all, these are all the weeds that are controlled by this. I'm not going to go, you know, I'm not going to belabor it. Anyway, here's what, here's, here's where the rubber meets the road. Okay, so that's not, there's, um, there's Scott's, this R8A. Those, I don't know if those are commercially available anymore. I looked on the internet. I was going to make a recommendation. If you're going to buy one, buy that one. I can't find it. So, and then you've got Lesco, you've got an Anderson product, you got a Lily, and then you've got a low, medium, and high rate. Here's essentially the lower, medium, and high rates, okay? Okay, so you got two and a half pounds, 3.8, 4.0. Now it'll depend on the type of grass and a number of other things. But we're talking about the fertilizer setting. So, okay, so let's just take the Scott's R8A, okay? And you're wanting to go out, let's say you're wanting to go out at the high rate. So the setting on a Scott's R8A is K and a half. So here's the chart. I'm going to leave a link for this chart, or you can freeze it, <laughs> whatever you want to do. Okay, this is, there again, this is the SGN of 150. There, you can find that on the bag. Sorry, jumping around. There's the fertilizer settings, and you can see the SGN. That is basically... That's basically the sieve size that the product passes through. The higher the SGN, the more coarse the product is. That is important for you guys who are cutting your grass one an inch or half inch or lower. Um, if you don't want to really go above a 150 SGN, because if you go to a 240 and then you go out and mow your grass, it's going to basically pick up a lot of that. Okay, because you're mowing it real tight. You guys above an inch, inch and a half, you can go with the 240 SGN or S, yeah, SGN, and you'll be fine. But i just allowing you to know. Like greens grade stuff generally is 100 SGN. Um, you know, fairway grade stuff, uh, and I'm saying fairway grade because I'm a golf course superintendent, generally is 150 and above, clear as high as 240. But this one's there again. And you'll see these on this, it'll be 240, and generally with 240, 150 for home lawns is all you're going to be dealing with. You're not going to be dealing with anything small enough for golf course greens. Okay, back to this. I apologize. Give me too much information, maybe. Okay, Scott's R8, you want to go at a high rate is K and a half. So we go over here, we find Scott's R8A, there it is, and our setting K and a half is here, okay? So if we have a Scott's with Edge Guard Mini, that'll be a six and a half setting, okay? Or if we have a Scott's AccuGreen 1000 is a nine on their setting. But anyway, what you do is, is you take that R8A and you find your spreader, okay? Basically this white line all the way across, a spiker spreader would be four and a half, a Vertico 4300 would be seven and a half. This covers a great deal of the spreaders that are commercially on the market. Okay, so I'm going to leave this link down below. This is actually from Lesco. Um, great company, by the way. Um, anyway, so that is how, that's a good starting point uh, of where you set your spreader for at least the Anderson product, Scott's product, they will have, they'll probably have a Scott's spreader setting and then you can find your, this should cover you. This should cover, this covers a great deal of, of spreaders. Try to find your model number somewhere. That's how you get started. Okay, and you can use that um, for just about anything. So anyway, that helps you out, gets you there. I actually have a calibration video for spreaders if you want to look at that or if you have any problems, but I found out that's about the best way to calibrate one.
For those of you who wish to seed, okay, there is a Scott's Turf Builder triple action for seeding, and it is a 21, 22, 4. 21% nitrogen, 22% phosphorus, 4% potassium. For a starter fertilizer, you want that middle number to be high, so it's 22% phosphorus, okay? So this is a really good seeding product, and it will control, it's not, not a quite a broad spectrum as the other three products that I just told you about, the two sprayer and the, and the two granular, but, or the one granular, but it, it, it is a nice, it's 48 bucks a bag, it does 4,000 square feet, um, it is nice to put it out, and there again, you don't have your seed competing with weeds. It's not a broad spectrum control as much, but it does control a great deal of grass, including crabgrass. So, anyway, and it's, but it's not sell for Florida or Puerto Rico, which is not that big a deal because generally you guys in, Florida, in those areas are probably vegetating your grass anyway, as far as establishment. Okay, now, so we've got, oh, by the way, uh, the Scott's Turf Builder Triple Action is a Group 27 herbicide. So anyway, um, just to give you an idea. So you got a group 27 going out there, and you also have, um, the, if you're using a pre-emergent, you also have a group three as well, at the very least. Um, okay, now, hose applicators. These are if you guys just, you know, um, maybe don't have the equipment, don't want to buy the equipment, maybe just starting out, but this should help you. Okay, we have a hose applicator, the BioAdvance All-in-One Weed and Crabgrass Killer. There are a ton of these products on the market, and that's why I'm going to leave the link down below. So you be sure you get the right one. This will cover nearly all your broadleaf weeds, and you can put it out if you have any breakthrough for crabgrass in the summer. It's pretty easy to put out. 13 bucks on Amazon treats 5,000 square feet, so I would need at least two of these. The likelihood of you having to go out with these products, again, is pretty is high, okay, just because it's convenient and they generally put the rates on there a little less than they would when you go out with backpack sprayer. So you can retreat in two weeks, okay? So just monitor things, probably plan to do that with these type of applicators, okay? Um, now, you can't use that on St. Augustine, uh, centipede or carpet grass, all right? I got something for you guys here in a second. Uh, let's see, now, on this product, as far as crabgrass control, um, it's kind of weird. It's got quinacorac in it, okay? Quinacorac is a very good herbicide that treats both broadleaf and grassy weeds. The problem with it is it only, it's kind of weird, it only treats crabgrass either early or very mature crabgrass. Um, they generally, most quinacorac labels say do not put out before August 1st. Or, well, let me back up. Between mid-May, I'm talking about my area in the mid-Atlantic, to about the end of June, maybe middle of June, it works great. G late June, July, end of, I think it's August 15th, if I'm not mistaken, not August 1st, August 15th. Mid-June, late June to August 15th, it won't touch it. It's kind of weird. Middle-aged crabgrass won't do much for it. So you want to get it early, or if you want to clean it up and maybe do your fall seeding, put it out in middle of August, you can control your crabgrass. But this does, there again, all broadleaf grasses. Um, now, uh, it does have a spray marker in it, meaning it kind of will show you where you have sprayed. Um, and I'll call that arguably. <laughs> now, maybe it's because of my eyes are 54 years old. Um, just be cognizant of where you put it. Um, also, if you have a spray marker in it, be careful around your steps, any type of um, uh, cement. Uh, it, it won't stain it for long, but it can stain it. So anyway, but there is a turf marker in it that would help you out. Shout out to the Bucky, Bucky's Cup. All right, anyway. <laughs> All right, last thing. All right, for you centipede, St. Augustine guys, the only thing I can find is an atrazine. Um, Atrazine, okay, it's a high yield atrazine weed killer. Um, $24. Um, let me say that again. High yield atrazine weed killer RTS. It's $24. Bucks. That does 3,700 square feet. Um, you cannot put this out six months before you seed, which is probably not a big deal for you guys down in Florida because you're probably vegetating it anyway. Um, 
two to three days afterwards, you don't want to have any irrigation. You want it sitting there, all right? And, but you need to water it after those couple, three days. You need to get some water in it so we'll get it in the soil. It's actually got a little bit of post emergent pardon me, pre-emergent action to it, okay? Uh, it is not sold north of North Carolina. You don't need it north of North Carolina, but I'm just helping you centipede and saying, Augustine, guys, that's probably about the only option you got if you're using these. So, anyway, <sighs> that should cover you. I have got links to all of these products down below, um, so that way you know you're getting the right ones. Um, and look, I've got all kinds of videos on on YouTube with that probably pretty much covers the gamut of anything you'd possibly need if you put um, in the comments, you put anything in the comments, you can, uh, I'll get back to you very quickly. If you subscribe and hit the bell, it's February. I'm telling you about pre-emergent herbicides, which is something you're going to be doing. If you hit that bell, you're going to get a notice of, hey, I've got a video up. It might be something you need to do. I'm going to do something on grubs here in a little bit. I'm going to do also the, um, uh, well, at, grubs will be about another month or two. Mm, yeah, two, February. Um, I'm going to finish my uh, June, July, August programs for everyone. So you hit the bell, you'll get notifications. It'll probably preempt you to cover something, fungus, insects, what have you, in the thing. So anyway, I'm Greg Phillips, and thanks for watching.